All right, guys, we've gotten the, uh, the, the front end stripped off of the street glide that we picked up the other day. I think uh, yesterday we were doing a video talking about the bike we picked up out of uh, New Mexico. It had the uh, 23 on the front. We're getting ready to do a 30 uh, slip fit, well done kit. Uh, it's also what we call a short neck kit. The, there's a lot of advantages, in my opinion, to a short neck kit. For one, it's gonna give us a lot more clearance. Uh, obviously the wheel is getting larger in diameter, so either the, the bike is gonna to have to come up or we're gonna lose some uh, travel on our front end. The advantage on a short neck, we'll compare it with a, uh, the 23 neck that I, or a set of trees that were on the bike. This is a new set of 23 trees. We're gonna do a 23 here in the next day or so as well. Uh, give me a second to put this together here real quick so you got an idea of what I'm speaking of, the difference in between the two. So if you can compare trees, obviously if both of these are at the same height, the top, as you can see, how much more clearance we actually have underneath right here. This is uh, the neck that we're going to weld in. I made mention it's a very nice billet piece where our wiring will run through. It's pretty easy to pull the wiring out. We've got some inspection covers in to cover this area up. If you're running a road glide, there's a bracket that bolts here that holds the uh, outer fairing in place. So we got our, our template that come with our knit kit. It's made out of paper. Uh, you could definitely cut this out and use it. Just so happens, uh, we do so many of these, we have a uh, piece of sheet metal that we've cut out the same shape as the template. And we just use some long 3 8 fasteners to go through the neck. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna give us an area of where we want to cut our existing neck off at. So basically this is gonna be the line that we're gonna end up scribing to cut our neck off. You've got several choices of how to cut the neck. Uh, you can use a cutoff wheel. Uh, we're gonna use a sawzall. Uh, you can use a hacksaw if you wanted to. It just may take you a little while, but it can definitely be done. What we wanna do is we want to establish our rake angle of what we're starting out with. Essentially, when we go to a 30, we're gonna add eight degrees of rake in the neck. So you've got a couple choices. Uh, we, there's a lot of different style uh, protractors out there that's gonna give us our degrees. This is a nice little digital one that we use frequently. Uh, as a matter of fact, anymore, virtually every freaking cell phone, if you go to your compass settings, we'll actually also have a protractor that's gonna tell us degrees as well. Uh, once again, we got this nice flat surface that we can go off here. If I hold it flush, uh, coming up right on 26 degrees which in turn, that's basically what a uh, stock Harley frame should be reading, 26 degrees. And we're gonna add eight degrees to that. Uh, so we're gonna so let's roll this thing on over to the fab side. Go ahead and cut this neck off. Whenever we cut this neck, we're gonna be extremely close to the VIN number right here. Uh, so whenever this gets welded back, we're gonna TIG weld this. We're gonna be very careful not to get into the VIN number at all. Then after we weld our neck on, we're gonna paint the entire front half of the frame here down to the uh, uh, these seams. We're gonna paint this here gloss black. We'll go back and we'll fill the VIN number in with white and wipe it off so it looks OEM back, just like it did whenever it come from Harley Davidson. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're going to scribe our line. I'm actually applying slight pressure back on this. There we go. To make it a little bit more visible and easier to see, we'll then take a piece of tape and follow our line. Let's watch Ron cut the neck off the frame.
We like to countersink the holes so the fasteners sit flush on the inspection covers. We drill four half inch holes on the side of the frame for the plug welds. All right, guys, as you can see, it's really not that hard to cut the neck uh, to get it set up ready for welding. So basically, it, it basically, if you did not have a welder at your house, uh, you could actually load the, the vehicle on your trailer right now, run it to a local welding shop, some sort of fab shop uh, that you trust, and have them reattach the neck. So what we're going to do, Ron's going to go ahead and weld this up. We'll grind the welds down so it's nice, smooth, pretty seamless to where it takes virtually no body filler whatsoever. And we're going to paint the front half of that frame tomorrow uh, and we'll conclude the video then. Thank you guys.